I think I solved where the One Piece is located. Laugh is located in the Florian Triangle and it may have been foreshadowed countless of times throughout their lair bar. I also think I solved where the Florian Triangle monsters are and what their true purpose is in the story. Trust me, they will be returning. This theory is connected to Luffy, Joy Boy, Nika, Moria, Emu, the Void Century, Roger, the Oni Race, and of course, being Sake. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because this video is gonna blow you away. Now, with all that being said, let's get straight into the theory. So before I get into anything, let me first explain what I believe the Florian Triangle monsters are and why it's important to the theory. It is to my belief that the Florian Triangle monsters were ancient giants. In Wano, we see that the head of Onigashima belonged to a certain race of giants who seem to have been around the size of things like Zunisha and the Sea Kings. Now we technically don't know if the body of this beast was as big as Zunisha, but we could only assume its massiveness since this is only the head of the creature. Just like how it seems that there was a race of giant elephants back in the void century, I also believe there were many ancient oni giants. I believe that they were connected to the ancient kingdom since it seems the most recent ones of their race, like Ors Jr. and Kaido, are pirates. Ors Jr. even wears the giant straw hat, possibly foreshadowing their original connections. One of the biggest hints to these mysterious monsters being giant onis is the name of the Florian Triangle itself. Florian Triangle quite literally translates to Devil's Triangle. Let's think about that for a second. If it's the Devil's Triangle, then wouldn't it just make sense that devils live in it? In fact, wouldn't it make sense that it was specifically called that because it's where devils roam? In case you forgot, Ors is literally labeled as the devil in One Piece. Plus, Onis are literally just demons in Japanese culture. I wonder if the world government labeled Ors as a devil or if he received that title from somewhere else. If they labeled him as a devil, then they may have also been the ones to label the area as the Devil's Triangle. The next clue to the monsters being devils devils or ancient giants is that if you take a look at their silhouette, it fits that of a giant oni. The bottom of the creature is the widest or thickest part and it gets much thinner as it goes higher. This silhouette even resembles the exact shape of or statues that we see in Skypea and Upper Yard. Wouldn't it just make sense that these were other ancient giants since Thriller Bark is the arc where we learned of them in the first place? It kind of feels like Oda is basically just telling us what they are but no one has really grasped the idea idea that it could be something so obvious. It also seems that just like the Lunarians, the world government erased the ancient giants from history. They most likely committed a mass genocide to wipe them out and did it because they feared their strength. We learned that in Punk Hazard, the world government was trying to obtain the secrets to true gigantification and when we see the types of giants they wanted, they were ones from the Ors race. The only races we've really seen them try to replicate and experiment on are Onis and Lunarians which should tell you something. Another thing that proves that they fear and wiped out their race is because their logo of danger has an ancient giant on it for some reason even though there isn't really any of them left in the world. This may prove that the Ors race was the biggest threat the world government and celestial dragons ever saw. So if the world government really did wipe out or at least attempted to wipe out the Ors race then what if that's why they roam in the Florian Triangle? Maybe they roam there because that's the only place where they can safely hide. I mean it'd be pretty easy to find and capture them since their size gives them the disadvantage of not being able to properly hide or run away. Another possibility that they could be there for, which also leads into my next part of the theory, is that they are there because it's where the ancient kingdom is. Maybe they are there to either protect the One Piece from outside forces, or simply because it was once the island that they called home. So now let me explain to you why I think Laugh is in the Florian Triangle, and I'll expand on that previous thought in a bit. So the first reason for it being in the Florian Triangle is that wouldn't it just make sense? I mean, think about it. What other location fits better to hold the final island in a pirate story where the biggest pirate treasure of all time is found? What other place in One Piece is more mysterious and piratey than a location in the sea that is literally based off of the Bermuda Triangle? Going back to how it's translated to the Devil's Triangle, wouldn't it also make sense that the place that exposes the gods of the world is named after the devil? The world government probably named this area of sea as that not only because 
because it's where many people mysteriously die, but also possibly because it's a place that completely opposes them. For those that think that the will of D is the will of the devil, this could potentially also be linked to that. I personally don't think that D stands for devil, but I won't throw the possibility out until we truly find out what the will of D is. Also, what other place could Laughtail be where no other man in 800 years has even stepped foot on the island? Not a single marine, pirate, or explorer has touched the island since the void century, which proves that Laughtail would have to be in such a ridiculous and mysterious location to not have even been found by accident one single time. We also know that every single year, hundreds of ships go missing within it and end up without their crews. This seems like it's been happening since the beginning of time, and the narrator even says that no one knows what happens to the ships or what happens within the Florian Triangle. This could go back to what the Florian Triangle monsters do. Maybe these gigantic creatures are responsible for ships and people going missing, and maybe you have to have the strength of someone like Roger to even be able to obtain the One Piece. Like, I know being Pirate King is not supposed to be a power scaling title, but it could definitely end up being that if you have to be one of, if not the strongest man in the world to even be able to get past these demonic creatures. It seems like almost every island in One Piece has some sort of sea king or monster that you must get past to get to the island, and Laughtail being the final island may have the most extreme case of this. I personally think it'd be better if not anyone could become Pirate King, unless they were at least capable of taking care of themselves in this dangerous world. Also, how else would we learn what the Florian Triangle monsters are unless the Straw Hats have a direct confrontation with them? Oda himself claimed that he will reveal every last mystery that he's ever brought up in the story, which means this will be one of them. What other way could we find out about this unless going back into the Florian Triangle itself? This basically shows that we will most likely go back there at some point in the story, and the only way I can really see the Straw Hats doing this is if they need to find an island located there. Another possible hint that Laughtail is inside the Florian Triangle could be that when Roger and his crew are there, the island almost seems to be surrounded by some sort of cloud or mist. Now, I know Oda couldn't just show us what the Ancient Kingdom looked like, but still, maybe he drew the fog because it is a place that is foggy since it may be hidden within the fog of the Florian Triangle. Okay, so now that you understand why it logically just makes sense as to why Laughtail may be in the Florian Triangle, now let me explain why this works perfectly with the arc that the Straw Hats were in within this location. So, I believe the Thriller Bark arc foreshadows a lot of the biggest mysteries of One Piece and the arc as a whole may in fact represent the overall theme of the whole story. The first mystery it may have solved or foreshadowed is the original owner of the giant straw hat. Now, most of you who have already watched my other videos have already heard me say this many times, but it is true that the giant straw hat scene was most likely foreshadowed in Thriller Bark with Orz's introduction scene. I mean, they are practically the exact same thing with perfect parallels between Emu and Moria. Both Moria and Emu walk into giant freezers while holding Luffy. We don't only get the original Joy Boy foreshadowed in this arc, but we also get Gear 5 Luffy foreshadow continuously. In fact, I think Oda hinted at it more in Thriller Bar than any other arc in One Piece, including Skypiea. First off, we see Luffy's shadow continuously taking the shape of the shadow of Nika that Oda drew when Luffy first went into Gear 5 and when describing Nika with Who's Who. Luffy's shadow takes the form of Nika up to at least three times, so you can tell that Oda was kind of just putting it in our face. The next thing that foreshadows Gear 5 is when Luffy becomes Nightmare Luffy. When he takes this form, he is called called the Warrior of Hope, kind of like how Nika is the Warrior of Liberation. I mean, when he's in his nightmare form, he basically is a Warrior of Liberation since he's freeing everyone, including himself, from Moria's cruel shadow powers. I believe this as a whole represents the ending of One Piece and how Luffy, the Warrior of Liberation, will bring the dawn. In Thriller Bark, the dawn is also heavily symbolized since the people can't go outside once dawn comes because if they do, they will die from the sunlight. Luffy being the Warrior of Hope brought hope and defeated ores and Moria right at dawn. This may symbolize how the whole world is currently under a knight or the rulership of Emu and that when Luffy defeats him or her, the dawn will come because he is the sun god. We know how the dawn is so important in One Piece and how one day Luffy will bring it. Also, when Luffy becomes his nightmare form, for some reason he resembles the Oars family which might foreshadow how Joy Boy looked while in his Gear 5 form. You can clearly see that he has small, skinny, short legs, huge forearms, and then a thick, bony neck, which are all traits that look exactly like that from Oars. Maybe we see all of these Joy Boy references because the location of Thriller 
spark, which is within the Florian Triangle, is in the area that is most connected to Joy Boy. Roger makes it clear that Laugh Tale is all about Joy Boy and it most likely holds all the secrets to the previous one and to Luffy. Another mystery that Thriller Bar could have foreshadowed is the mystery of death in One Piece. Roger claims to Ray Lee that he's not gonna die even though he's about to get his head chopped. We know that in One Piece, a man doesn't die until he's forgotten and Will allows you to live on forever. There may even be more to the mystery at Laugh Tale that we just haven't learned about yet. Now, this is foreshadowed or paralleled in Thriller Bark since all of Moria's zombies are technically immortal and since they came back from the dead. Brooke also tells us that everyone has two souls and that their shadow is one of them. He explains how they arrive when you are born and leave when you die. Them being another soul to a person also makes sense with the fact that they carry on their personalities and fighting abilities. What we learned here in Thriller Bark is only half of the mystery of souls and immortality in One Piece and we will most likely learn the other half at Laugh Tale just like Roger did. One of the biggest clues that Laugh Tale is located within the Florian Triangle is that the first time we heard Bing Sake, it was in the Florian Triangle. If you didn't already know, Bing Sake is a song that completely references Laugh Tale when it says the line, doesn't matter who you are, someday you'll just be bones, never ending, ever wandering, our funny traveling tale. It also just has many references to the ancient kingdom when it talks about the Don, the Kazuki Crest, and possibly much more that we haven't even realized yet. We also see that when the Roger Pirates go on the last voyage, they sing the song Bing Sake while out at sea. This all proves that the song is directly tied with Laugh Tale and ultimately with the One Piece. Mourn with music and Bing Sake, the crewmate Luffy always wanted since the beginning was a musician. Maybe he always wanted one more than anything else because it has to do with his dream which comes after he finds the One Piece. Brooke may be a key role to whatever his dream is. This dream may not only be Luffy's but since it's also Roger's, there's a chance that it could have been a dream of the original Joy Boy from the Void Century. We'll probably find out what it is at the One Piece or at the very end of the story. If a musician is needed for Luffy's dream, that could be yet another connection since Thriller Bark is all based around getting Brooke as their crewmate. So now that you see all the references to Laugh Tale, the Void Century, and Joy Boy in Thriller Bark, now let me explain how the Straw Hats will even get there. So first off, I just think that if they found out that it's located in the Florian Triangle, their reactions will all be so funny to see. For example, Nami, Chopper, and Usopp will probably be crying out of fear. Luffy will probably be excited. Zoro will be lost or confused. Robin will say something scary. Frankie will say super something. And Brooke will probably say some bone joke about the Florian Triangle. So now, how would they get to the island or even find it? It's not only hidden in the mist, but the Straw Hats most likely can simply use their log post to lead them to its direction. In Reverse Mountain, we learn that normal compasses don't work in the Grand Line. Plus, the sea and wind currents don't follow any clear pattern. So knowing how hard it would be to find an island that's not linked to the magnetism of the log pose allows me to think that there's only one possible way to find it. That way would be with a south bird. With this bird, you can head towards the direction that you need to by looking at the direction that the bird is facing. Another possible way the Straw Hats could find Laugh Tail is potentially by some sort of technological device that we don't know of yet. Somehow, the Marines hide their bases in the Grand Line by not letting them be discovered by log poses. Now, that's a mystery in itself, but how they find the locations of these islands is what matters in this theory. Maybe they have a certain device that allows them to know where they're navigating which could be very useful when trying to find another hidden island. We do know that it's possible to find untrackable islands without pure luck since Law ended up finding Punk Hazard. Now, we just need to learn how it's possible. So now that I've explained everything onto as why I think the One Piece is in the Florian Triangle, now I need to explain why I think this is more likely than Ennis Lobby, which is the place where many think it could be located. Before I get into why, I just want to say that even though I think this, the Ennis Lobby theory is still one of the best One Piece theories I've ever seen and it completely blew me away. So to the plot holes, first off, if Laugh Tale was located in the whole of Ennis Lobby, wouldn't that mean that the world government basically had the One Piece and Laugh Tale for many years, potentially even 800? If it is located there, you're telling telling me that not a single marine went down there to see what it is. I mean, there's no way no one since Roger has been to Laugh Tale in 800 years if it is at Ennis Lobby. The next plot hole would be that if the world government obtained Laugh Tale, how have they not destroyed it by now or completely erased it from history? In recent chapters, we learned of one of the ultimate powers of the world government, which is the power
power to blow up a whole island. If Laugh is located under there, I don't quite see why they wouldn't have used the same mechanism on Laugh Tale itself. Like, why even allow the possibility of someone being able to find it? I think it makes more sense if Laugh Tale is located in a place where no one can find or have access to. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up why I believe Laugh Tale is located in the Florian Triangle. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. If you want more One Piece content, then check out one of these two videos right here.